As you may remember, these are the amounts that the 20 customers spent and our manager at the Inlet Square Mall took a sample of these 20 amounts. So we're going to calculate the confidence interval of the mean using plain old Excel in the data analysis tool pack. So we click on data, data on our ribbon bar, go all the way to the right and use the data analysis toolbar or link. And then we want to go to descriptive statistics. So you have to find descriptive statistics, click on descriptive statistics, click OK. And I've already got the data in there because I ran it just to make sure I was doing it right. So here what we're going to do is you can go in this by selecting that little spreadsheet looking icon and it'll minimize the dialog box but it'll work just as well even without doing that. So you highlight our text and because we're using the Megastat we're not using Megastat but we're using the Excel without the Megastat you can include the headers you just have to tell Excel that you are you do have a label in the first row and what we're gonna do also is instead of putting this on a new worksheet because we have plenty of space here we're gonna just put it right here in the worksheet that we currently have because we only have the one column of data and it's not gonna be a problem and we wanna go ahead and select our confidence level for the mean and it's by default 95 percent so we can leave that in there and let's just for good measure get our summary statistics as well so we click OK and there we have our data already put together and while it's still highlighted let's go back to home on our ribbon tab go to format and do an auto format column width on there um, but to make this a little bit cleaner What I've done is I've selected all of the cells and then by holding down the control key, key I clicked on count and that deselected the count cell. And now we can go in here and go to our number. This is just a little side tip that you can do and then your decimal place is set at 2. That will also marry up better with what we have on the, oops it looks like I didn't deselect this. Oh well, we'll just get rid of it this way. Um, it'll just marry up a little bit better with what we have in the book. Now you'll notice in here that we don't have a confidence interval. We get a confidence level, which this is your margin of error. This is what the uh, Excel gives you, is the margin of error. And if you remember, for the margin of error, what we had to do in order to create our, create our lower limit and our upper limit is we had to add or subtract the margin of error from our mean. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have our mean, and we do equals mean, and for the lower limit, we're going to subtract our margin of error, and then equals mean plus our margin of error, and we get our upper limit, $45.13 and $53.57, and that's what we got in our book approach as well when we did it longhand. So now, let's go ahead and do this in our Megastat. Now, I gave you, there, there are a couple of different ways that we can do this. The easiest way to do this is to go to Megastat, Descriptive Statistics, and you'll find that your data is probably not pre-selected like mine was, but you go in there and you select your data, this time leaving out the label or the column heading, whichever you would, like, you would like to call it. Go in and select a confidence interval. Make sure it says 95% on there. You can put the standard error of the mean in there just to see what it comes up with. And then your basic sample statistics you can put in there as well. If you wanted to, you could also include your skewness and kurtosis, which give you a better, a better visualization of your data set also. Now we just hit OK, and with a Megastat, as usual, it has created an output tab or an output worksheet and provided all of the information there. But let's go ahead and copy it. We select it all, hit Control C, go to the other tab, back to the other tab, and let's put it right about here. And again, while it's still selected, let's do an auto format and uh, auto column width, excuse me. And then we can, let's see, it probably, uh, it's plenty of room, I guess. So 
Now here, again, let's do this and put all of these as two decimal places so we can compare a little bit more clearly. And again, our confidence intervals here are the same as what we calculated down here and the same as what we have in the book. And the advantage here with Megastat is it actually calculates the lower and upper limits of the confidence interval for us, not just the uh, margin of error. I want to point out another feature in Megastat as well, but before I do that, let's go ahead and rename our output tab and just say descriptive. Let's call it descriptive CI because we use the descriptive tab in Megastat. Now let's go back to our data set here. Go to add-ins, go to Megastat. Now this is what's actually listed on your slide and I list it there because you have more options in here when you're using this approach. So you go to Megastat, go down to confidence intervals slash sample size and ensure that you've got the confidence interval mean selected. So go up here to the top and that's probably already selected by default. Now the difference here is that you have to input the mean. So we have the mean already so let's go ahead and just select the mean from our data or our output from before. You also have to put in your standard deviation. So we'll put in our sample standard deviation and then we put in our n which is 20 and we do our confidence interval now here though you get the option of choosing the Z distribution or the T distribution so it's kinda good if you wanted to play around with it a little bit to compare the two distributions and what type of confidence intervals that you get from each of the distributions or each of the uh, distributions based on the number of samples the observations that you have so you can click the preview if you want here or you can just hit the OK button and again we'll have our output here and I'll copy this over just so that we can see and we'll put it right over here and again we'll just for make ease of viewing we'll auto column fit it and we can just drop that down there like that and we'll take all of these let's see if I can undo the end this time I'll try it see what happens go to number number two decimal places click OK nope didn't do it so we'll just do it this way and what is our upper and lower confidence level same thing as we got in each of the other instances as well so there are three different ways to get it two of which use Megastat one of which uses the Excel data analysis tool pack